So my grandfather was a really interesting guy. Um, he was a sharpshooter in the Polish army. And then the war started. Uh, I'm not entirely clear on the sequence of events, but I think he was probably sent home uh, because the Germans invaded and I, I think the army dissolved. Some of it went into exile in England. And actually, so the Germans invaded his family. Uh, a lot of the, his brothers scattered into different armies. So a couple of them went and fought in the Polish army in exile. One of them went and fought for the Free French. His littlest brother was deported to Auschwitz. His family, his, his parents and his little sister and maybe some others, I don't know, were uh, murdered in the street in front of their house, I think. There's a couple of versions of the story. One is that he saw it, the other is that he didn't, he came home after. However, uh, apparently, so my mother was watching the Shoah when it was on PBS many, many years ago. I haven't seen it, I don't have the stomach for it. Um, and he called my mother and he said, are you looking at the screen right now? That's our house. And those neighbors, those people in the window are our neighbors. They always wanted our house. Um, at any rate, he escaped over the border into Ukraine, and he spent most of the war in the woods in that general area. You know, probably some of the time he was on the Polish side, probably sometimes on the Ukrainian side. But he just kind of um, melted into the landscape, I think. Uh, and he met my grandmother during the war, too. They, they were hiding out together, so they were you know, married by the end of the war. When I asked him how they met or where they met, he said, where I met your grandmother, I met her in the cornfield. Always I am turning around and she's right behind me. Because she could probably tell, like, this guy will keep you alive. He wasn't alone. He was protecting a lot of people. He and uh, my grandmother's brother and a couple of other people, they protected 19 people who were hiding in a hole in the ground at different times. Again, I'm not entirely clear on the entire sequence of events, and I know sometimes they were indoors and sometimes they were not. It's hard to know. Uh, but at any rate, when, when the Russians liberated that part of Europe, <laughs> I asked him once, how did you know the war was over? And he, he said, how I know? The Russians come running across the field. <laughs> so they um, wanted to conscript him into the Red Army, and he wasn't having any of that. So he really hated communism, and it wasn't out of ideology. It was out of experience in Ukraine. Um, <laughs> this is another example of my grandfather's sense of humor. And I only found this out posthumously. So he told me once that when he got to Ukraine, there was an election. And I said, who was on the ballot? He said, Stalin, Stalin or Stalin? So I voted for Stalin. So years later, I repeat this story to a friend of mine from Odessa. And she said, oh, yeah, they tell that joke about Putin now. <laughs> uh, and all this time, I thought he was telling me some version of the truth. <laughs> um, but he really hated what he saw there. And. I'm, I'm skipping over the part that I really wish I knew more about, which is that for about six months after the war ended, he and a, a friend of his, who I think was probably a Red Army official, I'm not sure, uh, were running black market operations back and forth over the Czech border. So, you know, southern Poland at this point. So the Red Army wanted to conscript him, and my aunt had just been born, and they were not wanting to stick around. He saw the writing on the wall. So he went to the CO and he said, I have a brand new little baby girl and I have two bottles of vodka and I want to go to the American zone with my family. And the guy said, leave the vodka and get out of here. I love that story. So he was kind of a badass. He had a temper, but he was very stoic also. You know, I mean, I never really saw his irascible temper except in little tiny flashes, but my mother's told me about it and I can picture it.